Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk about a uh, topic that I talk about on my stream a lot. That's something we never really got information about until pretty much now. That's going to be Ruthless Mode. Uh, so for players who don't know, before I ex start explaining, uh, essentially we're going to go through and read this. Ruthless is a additional character creation flag you can you can put on your character, kind of like how people say like SSF, right? Uh, or SSF, by the way. So Ruthless is going to be a complete side thing that players can opt into. Ideally, a lot of players who are like myself, who constantly like restarting Path of Exile over and over again. If you ever watch me play PoE, usually I'll like level in a trade league to 100, then restart, then play SSF, level to 100, then restart, so... This is actually kind of an interesting thing, which is why I'm kind of interested in Ruthless mode, but let's talk about it a little further. Okay, uh, Ruthless is not for everyone. If you don't like the sound of it, it's probably uh, best you continue playing the regular Path of Exile modes. It's not like Hardcore or, oh sorry, it's like Hardcore or SSF. Some players really enjoy the additional constraints as a way of enhancing their game experience. Many players do not, and that is okay. Kind of like my dumbass who hosts a uh, no stash private league, which I stopped playing, by the way. We got to like level 87 and stuff, but it was still fun for a little bit. Uh, Ruthless is not a replacement. Oops, not a replacement for regular Path of Exile. It is a challenging mode for a specific type of player. A change between a change being made in Ruthless is not an indication that we make that change in the regular game. In fact, we felt particular change was good. Uh, if we felt the change was good for the regular game, we would just make the benefit to everyone, right? Uh, another thing to understand about this is that Ruthless is like a side project that two people have been working on for like, I don't know, six to nine months, maybe even longer. So it's not like the whole development team is like all of a sudden just stopping Path of Exile and working on Ruthless. It's a very small team of players, which like I said, I think it's like two people. Uh, Ruthless is not monetized differently. You can play it for free and your existing MTX will work on it. So that's basically how all leagues work. Uh, Ruthless is not consuming different development resources. It's a pet. Oh, sorry. 18 months. Sorry, much longer. Okay. Uh, what Ruthless is. Here we go. Okay. Uh, Ruthless is a mode about friction, tension, anticipation. It's brutally difficult, but overcoming uh, that difficulty feels highly rewarding in a world where items are far below par. Every item has the potential to be uh, the breakthrough that you need. Ruthless is a mode that reimagines the traditional understanding of where Path of Exile's endgame is. It redefines the entire game as endgame. Even reaching higher campaign acts, let alone maps, is an achievement. Traditionally, weak items are suddenly very valuable. High-level characters are good. Uh, wait. High-level characters and good rare items uh, infer immense bragging rights. Ruthless is a mode where you barely find any items. You might get to act four without equipping a pair of rings, but each ring you find represents a huge power boost. Ruthless is a mode where most items are normal rarity. You do not see a lot of magic and even fewer rare items, but finding an item uh, of a base type you're looking for feels amazing. Ruthless is a mode where you find very little crafting currency. You might only find one orb of... Uh, oops. There you go. One orb of alchemy throughout the whole campaign, but that orb lets you convert any base type of your choice to a rare item. Uh, Ruthless is nostalgic. We picked the name because it was part of, uh, it was basically it was the fourth difficulty in Path of Exile. Um, back before we had 10 acts, we had what, like, basically normal, cruel, ruthless, merciless, normal, cruel, merciless, ruthless, or the other way around. Um, all right, here we go. Now we're actually getting to the meat. Okay, item scarcity. The core ruthless experience is that you don't have enough strong items to handle the content. Every item that drops has the potential to be an upgrade. And ruthless, the quantity of item drops has been massively reduced throughout the game. I'm gonna honestly imagine this is like a literal 99% quantity nerf to, to loot because they say if you're not finding a single ring base, like, oh man, that's, that's a big hit. The rate of finding magic and rare items has been massively reduced. Rings, amulets, and belts are much rarer than in regular Path of Exile. They cannot be purchased from vendors. Most league reward systems have been changed to only grant items that are specific to that league. For example, cluster jewels only come from Delirium. I actually really like this change in general. I don't want I don't think I like this at all for like Path of Exile, but specifically for this game mode, I think this is important because otherwise you'll find people just like pigeonholing into one thing because it gives them multiple stuff, right? Um, 
Many deterministic items such as divination cards or onigoroshi cannot be obtained. Many bosses like Aziri that guarantee unique drops still do, but are often harder to access. Limited crafting. Okay. Um, right. The drop rate of crafting currency has massively decreased. What I'm curious about is this, is, is, is this like also stacking with this? Because quantity of items and in general, you get less currency. So I wonder how that works, right? Like, are we going to be like level 82 with like three transportation orbs? <laughs> I, I, either way, I'm definitely going to try this game mode. So uh, the rate at which he receives shards. Oh my God. You actually, wait, vendoring items. I didn't even read this before. Vendoring items literally gives you less shards. Uh, master crafting is not available. This is one of the hardest ones for me. I genuinely don't like this, but I completely understand why they're doing it. Just this is like a big fun factor for me right here. Uh, this one also. So if they just said orbs of binding, orbs of dominance, influence, exalt orbs, and awaken orbs cannot be obtained, I would be happy. But the fact that Veiled Chaos is on here makes me kind of sad, but I understand it's very strong. When an influence item is reforged or the influence mod is removed, the influence is lost. So basically, if I'm understanding this correctly, the chances of you getting a Righteous Fire Helmet that's Elder Influenced, assuming you even get to that point, the item would quite literally have to be dropped on the floor. So technically, there is an Atlas node that says when mobs die, they have a chance of dropping an essence mod. So technically, I'm sure it is literally less than one in a million. You could have an essence mob in an elder influenced map drop a conch burn helmet. And then because of that essence node, assuming it's on the tree still, they said they're reworking the tree. It has a chance of rolling essence of horror. But again, I mean, the the pro, like the chance of that happening is literally lower than like one in a million. <laughs> Because I've never seen that happen, and I've played a lot of RF. Okay, most vendor recipes are not available. This is going to suck for playing um, uh, RF Marauder, specifically, because I am I get carried by flat, like, flat uh, damage recipe crafts with all my caster builds. It's really busted. All right, this part is kind of cool. Uh, and Ruthless skill gem drops matter. Support gem drops matter a whole lot. Gems cannot be purchased from the vendor. The fixture of fate and death and rebirth quests each award, award you a token that can be traded to Siyosa for any skill gem of 31 or lower. Support gems can only be found as random drops. You cannot obtain them deterministically. Ruthless is a league of item scarcity. When items are scarce, they are uh, excited to find. So this is kind of interesting. I like this a lot, actually. Uh, gems gain far less experience than they do in regular Path of Exile. This is a twist. Uh, it's a lot harder to level up your skills, which is another access of reduced ca uh, character power and ruthless. A melee character's damage comes from their weapons. Spellcasters get a lot of their damage from their gems as they level up. This change helps reduce the power gap between the two playstyles. The only problem with that is, like, melee actually need a weapon, and with ruthless, I don't know if you're going to get a weapon, and I don't know if you can do the vendor recipe for the weapon. Uh, okay, here's another one. I don't really like this one. All movement skills, almost all movement skills, are not available in ruthless. I don't like this at all. In this mode, movement skills trivialize game systems that matter a whole lot, such as terrain layout, monster body blocking, and actual level traversal. I mean, I don't understand the terrain layout, right? Like, I mean, I don't fully understand that because it just literally wastes time. Unless, like, unless you're getting, like, ambushed by a pack of bandits and you're going to flame dash over, like, a gap but you can't do that because it doesn't exist and then you die because of it i would rather have something like movement skills can be used three times per zone right like something horrifically awful but it at least gives us the ability to use it right uh but i understand i get it they want the game to be really brutal uh here's a full list of movement skills uh that are not available dash frost blink uh, flame Dash, Lightning Warp, Leap Slam, Shield Charge, Whirling Blades, Blink Arrow, Smoke Mine, Body Wop, uh, Body Body Wop, Body Swap, and Charge Dash. Venom Gyre, uh, Gyre relies on Whirling Blades and is hence also not available. All right, we got one more one more thing to go into. Additional changes. 
A compounding character experience penalty applies from 68 onwards. So basically, once you enter maps, it takes a lot of investment to start leveling. Uh, item drops are not allocated to specific party members. Looting is free for all. Honestly, playing Ruthless in a party sounds kind of fun too. Flasks, life, mana are not uh, restored upon entering town or your hideout. Vendors that sell flasks and Helena in your hideout can refill them for you. This disincentivizes the strategy of using portal scrolls as an instant full heal. I'm actually confused by this though. Can't you just use the portal scroll and then talk to Helena and get the full heal? Uh, Onslaught does not grant movement speed, which means we don't need this in our build, so this is a buff. Uh, if you die near a quest boss in the campaign, a chunk of its life is recovered. I actually like that a lot. I wish that was in regular Path of Exile. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, hardcore Ruthless characters are not migrated to standard Ruthless. They are just permanently dead. Utility Flask cannot gain charges while active. Okay, that's... This one is going to hurt, but I understand this. Flasks are busted. Scarabs only, uh, only enable mechanics in a map. They do not scale in power with tiers. Instead, higher tier Scarabs are needed for higher tier maps. So basically... White Scarab is for white map, um, Polished is for blue, and Gilded is for red. There's Ruthless specific Atlas tree. I really want to see this. This change, I actually don't mind. As you can tell by my voice crack, I don't really care too much for Scarabs, so th this is fine for me as well. Uh, content from past leagues is encountered less often. You do not accumulate free daily Atlas missions. Vol side areas, enkindling orbs, instilling orbs do not exist. Ruthless uses separate item filters, which must be created specifically for it. If a player used a regular Path of Exile one, then they would filter out items that are very useful in Ruthless. So overall, I'm actually, dare I say, kind of impressed with how many changes they actually did. I didn't really, I'll be honest with kind of like how the development of the game is going. I thought that they were just going to like put on some private league modifiers and slap on the tag ruthless and just go from there so i am actually very happy to see that there is you know i'm not calling this a direction because that's not a direction but like the passion is still kind of there behind the game right so anyway that's pretty much going to be it for me let me know what you guys think down below in the comments i expect 95 percent of people are just going to bash on it because you know a lot of people do not like a game mode like this but i'm just genuinely curious you know would you be interested in seeing me play it probably like one to two months into a league instead of doing like my third ssf restart we would do something like ruthless but yeah that's going to be it so hope you guys are having a wonderful time hope you guys are enjoying yourselves don't forget if you enjoyed the video feel free to like share and subscribe um, and don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day, but Sundays at twitch.tv slash pox. See you guys all later.